Hi guys, it's Lori from LoriStory.com. I have exciting news if you haven't heard already. Cricut has given us the green light to go ahead and show you the beta version of the Cricut Design Space app that's going to be available in January of 2015. It is still in beta version right at the moment, so there are some things that may change here and there, or icons may look a little different by the time the final release comes. But we're going to show you as it is. Uh, you'll notice right here on my iPad I have two Cricut icons. This is the current app that's available right now uh, that just gives you access to the Make It Now projects. This is the new one. This is what it looks like at this point. I'm going to click on it. You're going to find out that this um, app is super responsive, loads really quickly. I'm super, super excited about it. This app works just like most other apps on your iPod. You can just scroll with your finger and look through. These are the Make It Now projects. This right here is the really exciting part. You can now design a project from the iPad from scratch and you weren't able to do that before. So this means you can pretty much create anywhere that you have your iPad with you and Wi-Fi connection. You can create and send it to the Explorer if you're at home. If not, you can create and save it and cut it out when you get to your Explorer. So I'm going to start a new project from scratch. I'm going to tap on my iPad right here. This screen should look a little bit familiar to you. This is much like the Design Space app on the computer. This is where you will design all your work and your projects. This icon, or this little icon right here, is where you log in. The fact that you can log in gives you access to your Cricut library. Anything that you have previously worked on or saved to or SVGs, PNGs, uh, JPEG files that you have uploaded to Design Space are going to be available to you once you log in. They will all be in the Cricut library. You also have the option to save, start a new project. This is where you'll go to open projects that you have already designed. This is the design mat, which is where we're at right now. And this is, takes you to the cutting mats. Down here we have insert image. This takes you to the Cricut library. We'll go in there in a second. We have text. We have actions. Under actions we have group and ungroup, attach, detach, weld, slice, flatten, unflatten, arrange, duplicate, and rotate letters. The next button is edit. We have width and height, rotate. <laughs> horizontal and vertical mirroring, and we have horizontal and vertical position, which is where you place your image on the mat. Next we have the color sync button, which is where you can change your colors to match other layers. We have our layers panel, we have undo, redo, and down here in the settings panel, we have a couple new things. Here you have the option to now switch it to metric instead of inches. Uh, you can turn off the grid, or, uh, you can turn off the grid or leave the grid on. I like to leave it on. And smart guides, and this is something I'm going to show you in a minute. But this is a one of my favorite favorite features of the new app. A lot of the other beta testers have already done videos, and I'm going to link those below this video uh, so you can go in and they really went into detail into what each of these buttons can do for you and. Uh, illustrated it. For me it's easier to learn by getting in and designing something and figuring out what I need to do to accomplish what I want to do. So I just I'm going to make a card real quick and show you from start to finish that you can do this on the iPad and how a project workflow works on the iPad. So the first thing we're going to do is go down here to insert image and I'm just going to tap on that on the iPad. This gives you access to your Cricut Library. Everything that you have access to on the full-blown app on the computer you have right here. You can also search by categories. You can search by cartridge. You can just enter a search term right here. 
oops, can enter his search term right here and you still have filters if you want to get more specific when you're looking for something. I'm going to start with a rectangle. I feel like I always start with a rectangle. And I'm going to hit search. And you're going to see how responsive this is. Isn't that quick? I'm going to grab that one. Next thing I'm going to grab is a star. There's so many stars on here. I'm just going to grab this one. And the last thing I want is Happy Holidays. I'm just going to grab this one. I'm going to insert. So now we have our images on our mat. You can see the happy holidays, you can see the rectangle and the star. You can see right here that we have a layer turned off. All we have to do to fix that is click tap on this eye down here with the on the iPad. And now we have those two layers turned on. We have a star over here with a shadow layer. And we have our rectangle. First thing I'm going to do is tap on the star. You can move objects by simply touching and dragging. You can resize them by grabbing this handle right here. You can rotate them by grabbing this handle. And you see that yellow line? I'm going to explain that in a moment. And you can lock your image or unlock it just by tapping it. When you unlock it, it gives you the ability to stretch and drag it without keeping proportions. When it's locked, it will stay in proportion. Okay, so while my star is selected, I need to ungroup it. I really only need one of these stars. So while it's selected, I'm going to click down here in the Actions panel. And I have the option to ungroup. Now that I have ungrouped it, I can click off of it to deselect it. And now I can just click the green star, which is the one I want. The gray star I'm going to delete, so I just am going to tap on the red X and get rid of it. So here's my star. And I'm just going to drag this much smaller. I don't know exactly what size I'm going to need yet, but that's going to be my star. My rectangle, I'm going to need two rectangles, so I'm going to select it. I'm going to go down here to the Actions panel again, and I'm going to Duplicate, which is this button right here. You tap it, and then it duplicates one right on top of it. I'm going to move that one to the side. I'm going to click back on this rectangle. I'm going to go over here to the Rectangle in the Layers panel. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to move this up to the very top, tippy top, corner there and change that to white. And I'm going to push that back. Now I want to change the size of this rectangle. So in order to change the size, we go down here to edit. I'm going to tap on that. I'm going to unlock the keep proportions by tapping on that. I'm going to change it to 4.25 by height of 5.5. You can zoom in at any time simply by putting two fingers down on the iPad and either pulling them apart to zoom in or pulling them together to zoom out. For right now I'm going to leave this to about right there. Um, I'm going to take this rectangle and I want to change the size of this. So what I'm going to do is click down here again in the edit panel and it's already open we were just using it I'm going to unlock the key proportions just by tapping on it and I'm going to make this a width of uh, let's say 0 0.7 that might be too small I'm gonna hit plus and make it a little bit bigger okay 
And I'm going to make a height of, let's try 0.7 there. That looks about right. Okay, I'm just going to move these over here so that we don't lose them. And I'm going to zoom in on this. Okay, what I want to do, I'm going to take this rectangle, I'm going to put my finger on it, and I'm going to slide it over here. And I still think that rectangle is a little bit too wide. So I'm going to go back down to my edit, unlock, and I'm going to change the height. And I'm just going to use my minus button until it looks about where I want it. And I'm going to do the same with the width. That's more where I want it. Down here in the settings panel I showed you the smart guides option. Let me show you what that is. When you have an object and you want to line up another object with it, let's zoom in here so we can see, you can select that object and move it and when it gets to the center you're going to get this yellow line and now you know those two objects are perfectly centered. That makes me so happy. I love this feature. It's my favorite feature. I think I already said that. That's how much I love it. So I'm going to put that right here. You can also, if you want to align something side by side, it'll show you the top guideline when it's in line. It'll show you the bottom. Oh, right there. And it'll show you when you're centered right there. It will show you when you're lined up this way. So if I was trying to line this box up perfectly even with that box, I know that's lined. So for this purpose I need it to be centered and about right there. Okay now I want to, I'm going to put my finger down about right here and I'm just going to drag to select both of these. And if you look over here in the layers panel, you can see I selected them both. Now I'm going to go to the actions panel down here. And I'm going to slice. And that just cut this piece out. And I'm going to drag it just below. And I'm going to, while it is selected, I'm going to go back to edit. I'm going to unlock the key proportions again. And I'm going to change the width. And I'm just going to use my plus button. Maybe not that much. Okay. And now I'm going to line that back up in the center. I'm going to put my finger down. I'm going to drag and select both. Go back to my actions and slice. I'm going to bring it back down again. Oops. I'm going to go back to the edit, unlock key proportions, and I'm going to change the width using my plus. I'm going to move it over so that it is centered. going to press on the iPad screen and drag, select both, and action, slice. And I'm going to repeat this several times until I have seven different rectangles in graduating sizes all knocked out. So I'm going to speed the video through the remaining ones. Okay, so we have our card base done. Now I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to grab my star. And I want my star to be a gold or a yellow. So I'm going to click right here. And I'm going to change that to a yellow or a gold or something along those lines. That's just to help me remember when I'm cutting which color I'm on. And I want to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go down to the edit panel. I'm going to leave the proportions black. I'm just going to click on one and I'm going to make it smaller. And I could just pinch this smaller but it's easier to move it since it's so little. Just by using that. And I can tell it's perfectly aligned by the yellow line. 
Okay, so here is my happy holidays. I want to change the happy to red. And I want to change the background to green. Okay, and I just want to resize that to fit under here. It's going to be like the base of my tree. Perfect, and now all that's left is to send it to the mat. When you send it to the mat, this is the first screen that you usually come to in Design Space where I can actually grab this star and move it over here or move it over here. You can only move them in this screen. I can swipe across my screen. There is my white layer. There is my Happy Holidays and I'm actually going to put that over here just because I want a pretty sticky area on my mat and I tend to not use that corner as much. And here is my red layer. I'm going to move that over here. So the next thing we do is hit go. And you can see the screen tells me exactly like it does in Design Space to load my mat. I've got my paper on. I'm going to switch my media to cardstock and hit go. And Cricut is telling me to load my next mat, which is my green. I put my design over here in the right corner. I'm going to put my paper there. I'm going to leave the setting on cardstock, load, and go.